What's good everyone? Today join me on our quest to delve into one of my personal favorite games of this year. From a slip series, I'm serious, and it's currently one of my favorites from the past decade. Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. To be honest, if you click this video, you probably already know all about Trails of Cold Steel and the surrounding universe of Legend of Heroes. However, for the lucky few who don't know about the series, Trails of Cold Steel 3 is the third installment in a tetralogy of games called Trails of Cold Steel. The first Cold Steel game revolves around a group of new students enrolling in the prestigious Thor's Military Academy in the country of Erebonia. These group of students, led by Irene Schwarzer, formed the newly created Class 7, the first class in the Thor's Military Academy to mix commoners and nobles in the same class. Now, before we dive any deeper into the story review, I have to make something very clear to those of you new to the Legend of Heroes franchise. This is a very unique series in the way all of their games are connected in the same world around the same time as well. The first two Trails of Cold Steel games, you would be perfectly fine not having knowledge of the other Legend of Heroes games. But in Cold Steel 3 is where all those characters and knowledge of the other countries in those games begin to collide and play a role in different emotional beats of the story. I personally haven't played all the Legend of Heroes games, but after having played Trails of Cold Steel 3, it's pretty obvious when the game is setting up an emotional beat for the return of a character from other games. But if you haven't played the other games, you just don't feel the same connection. The original liberal trilogy, Trails in the Sky, is the first arc in the Trail series available on Steam and GOG. Even though it's on PC, Tozer could run these games in 2019. So this is just a fair way to play those games before uh, dipping your toes into Trails of Cold Steel 3 to have all the same emotional story beats hit in a more effective way and have a better understanding of the politics in the world. The second arc of the Trails series is the Crossbow series, containing Trails to Zero and Trails to Azure. At the time of this review, the Crossbow Saga games haven't reached the West yet, but they are being or slash have been released in a remastered version in Japan on PS4. And looking at the current record of localization, I can only assume a localization will be coming to the US as well. But if you try hard enough, you can find a fan localization of the series. The Crossbow series of games plays a very significant role for the story of Trails of Coast Steel 3 and runs in parallel with the first two games as noted in this timeline. After a quick intro of the series, it would be hard to set up the beginning of Trails of Coast Steel 3 without spoiling the past two games. So be warned, spoilers for the first two games will be happening right about now. Alright so boom, approximately one and a half years after the end of the Civil War in Trails of Coast Steel 2 is where Trails of Coast Steel 3 begins. Rain now, an Erebonian war hero, due to his actions from the Civil War, is known as the Ashen Chevalier. He is now a history professor at Thor's Military Academy's newly formed branch campus as well. And unsurprisingly, he oversees a new Class 7. It is now Rain's responsibility to help guide his students through a post-Civil War at Erebonia, and whatever that entails. Now to prevent spoiling any other story elements of Trails of Cold Steel 3, let's talk about the gameplay. If you played the past two entries in the series, you're already familiar with the arts and crafts system of Trails. Arts are essentially your offensive and defensive magic abilities that use energy points, aka EP, while crafts are character specific skills that use craft points, CP, that can also be used offensively or defensively based on the ability. Along with the bravery point system, where if you're able to perform a link attack by unbalancing an enemy, you gain a BP point up to a maximum of 5. BP points can be used to activate a link rush to deal additional damage with one other person, or use 4 points when to perform a group attack with all your current party members. The newest mechanic in the Trails of Coast Steel 3 series is the Break Gauge. This is a new gauge found underneath an enemy's health bar. Once this gauge is depleted, the enemy enters a break status, which increases the damage it takes and increases the likelihood of unbalancing an enemy to 100%. Another mechanic introduced is the Order System. Orders are party-wide buffs that use BP in order to be executed. They do not take a turn and can be changed if wanted. Party members have different orders that can be used if they are currently in the party or either... Party members have different orders that can be used if they are currently in the party, either as main attack members or as support. As a quick side note, orders absolutely break the game. Once you know the right orders for the right situation, you can absolutely destroy your enemies and bosses. Outside of battle, the gameplay loop of Trails of Cold Steel 3 is essentially the same as the other entries in this series. The loop entails you having free days that are free to use to explore the school and the surrounding town. And during this time, you are able to pick up side quests and interact with students, faculty, and other NPCs. You are given a certain amount of bond points on these days in order to spend time with certain main characters in order to increase their bond level with them. These events usually help these events usually help to learn more about their backstory and personality. I highly recommend to talk to every NPC in this game. You never know what fun stories may have to share with you. After these free days, your class has field day activities where you visit another region of Erebonia for a couple of days and take on missions in order to help the local community there, and are able to pick up other side quests there as well. 
You also have access to shops on your free days and field days as well in order to strengthen your party and pick up items needed for battle in generic JRPG fashion. Now, to prevent spoiling any other story elements of Trails of Cold Steel 3, let's talk about the gameplay. If you played the past two entries in the series, you're already familiar with the arts and crafts system of Trails. Arts are essentially your offensive and defensive magic abilities that use energy points, aka EP, while crafts are character-specific skills that use craft points, CP, that can also be used offensively or defensively based on the ability. Along with the bravery point system, where if you're able to perform a link attack by unbalancing an enemy, you gain a BP point up to a maximum of 5. BP points can be used to activate a link rush to deal additional damage with one other person, or use 4 points for to perform a group attack with all your current party members. Strike! It's down! At once! Leave it to I'm me! Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss me through the phone. He copied my whole fucking flow. Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar. Once. The newest mechanic in the Trails of Coast Seal 3 series is the break gauge. This is a new gauge found underneath an enemy's health bar. Once this gauge is depleted, the enemy enters a break status, which increases the damage it takes and increases the likelihood of unbalancing an enemy to 100%. Another mechanic introduced is the order system. Orders are party-wide buffs that use BP in order to be executed. They do not take a turn and can be changed if wanted. Party members have different orders that can be used if they are currently in the party, either as main attack members or as support. As a quick side note, orders absolutely break the game. Once you know the right orders for the right situation, you can absolutely destroy your enemies and bosses. Outside of battle, the gameplay loop of Trails of Coast Steel 3 is essentially the same as the other entries in this series. The loop entails you having free days that are free to use to explore the school and the surrounding town. And during this time, you are able to pick up side quests and interact with students, faculty, and other NPCs. You are given a certain amount of bond points on these days in order to spend time with certain main characters in order to increase their bond level with them. These events usually help to learn more about their backstory and personality. I highly recommend to talk to every NPC in this game. You never know what fun stories might have to share with you. After these free days, your class has field day activities where you visit another region of Erebonia for a couple of days and take on missions in order to help the local community there and are able to pick up other side quests there as well. You also have access to shops on your free days and field days as well, in order to strengthen your party and pick up items needed for battle, in generic JRPG fashion. I'm going to be straight up on this one. Legend of Heroes is not known for its groundbreaking graphics, but Trails of Cold Steel 3 is to implement a new engine since this game was developed solely for the PS4 and not the Vita. Therefore, there is a noble increase in the visual department compared to the last two entries, without the need to develop for Vita holding it back. You'll be able to play through this game without complaining about the graphics every step of the way. Alright, now let's talk about the sound. I, for one, am personally in love with the Trails of Coast Steel 3 music and sound design. I can't dive deep into the details of what makes these soundtracks sound so great, but I can't really see how I feel whenever I hear them. The music is a downright joy to listen to in this game. Whether you're casually exploring the world or engaging in a tough boss fight, the music tends to hit at the right story beats to hype you up for a grueling battle or to prepare to cry. The music in this game is the perfect seasoning for a story heavy game such as this. Now let's talk about the voice acting. If you're familiar with JRPGs, you already know how English voice acting can be hit or miss sometimes. But I personally enjoyed the voice acting, especially from Reen himself. The voice actor is able to portray how Reen is a little bit older and more frustrated from the past two games. Only problem with the voice acting in this game is how inconsistent it can be at times. During my playthrough of the game, a character would be speaking a sentence and then just decide not to finish the rest of their dialogue. I guess we've entered Sutherland. It's beautiful. Bro, you couldn't voice act the rest of this? How you gonna open up the- How you gonna open up a voice act? I cannot finish this! I guess I'm complaining about this. Complaining. This is regular JRPGs. This is pretty common in JRPGs, but it's still annoying nonetheless, due to the breaking up the flow of dialogue. So enjoy the voice acting when you can. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Trails of Cold Steel 3. Notable by my 100 hours devoted to this game over the past one and a half months. Literally, the only problem I have with this game is the massive cliffhanger of an ending they left the game on. I was screaming. I knew the game was coming to an end, and I was so engrossed with the story. I was on the edge of my seat thinking I had the answers I needed, but then things started to go left and right, new plot elements get added, and boom, ends right there. Hitting with an Infinity War level ending to be continued bullshit. But I think that just goes to show how invested I got into the story. Thankfully, we will be blessed with Trails of Cold Steel 4, fall of 2020 hopefully, all things considered. Stay safe guys, and thank you so much for watching. Deuces.